Hi, so it's, it's an honor for me to be part of this great evening. Uh, my Pecha Kucha presentation is going to be on the basic elements of Bhutan's cultural landscape. And from this presentation, I hope to showcase how the deep spirituality of the Bhutanese people is intertwined with the physical landscape. So Bhutan is just a speck in the globe. We have a billion neighbors to the north, and we have a billion neighbors to the south. <laughs> but we are a tiny kingdom with just 700,000 people. So for us, the preservation of our culture is very important because more than anything else, that, that establishes our security. Uh, we are basically mountains and deep valleys. We are deeply Buddhist. Uh, there's a lot of constraint thrown by the landscape. So a lot of our builders have to take into account our cliffs, our terrain, our topography, the solar orientation, and the drainage when you build our houses. In Bhutan, a lot of the public buildings are built on ridges, high areas where the visibility is, is, uh, is panoramic. And in the past, these were all defensive purposes. In the present context, it's a feeling of like the security and seeing that a good place is uh, preserved for future generations. Most of our valleys, they were all like aggregate, like a lot of our development is in clusters. We take great care to protect our productive farmland because a lot of our people are farmers. And in these particular instances, like the villagers would share a temple, an open space, and all communal spaces are shared, like water sources. But the farms are all terraced. A lot of our people are subsistence farmers, so which means they grow a lot of things that they have. Uh, being very Buddhist, spiritually Buddhist, like every house has an altar in, in, in their home. So the idea of Buddhism plays a great role in our cultural landscape. At the heart of every Bhutanese or a Buddhist, like we are governed by three animals. And this is what, uh, in our, our beliefs, this is what revolves our existence, our karmic existence, existence. So we have a pig, we have a rooster, and we have a snake. Pig signifies our uh, ignorance. The rooster signifies lust or greed, and the snake signifies our anger. So in our cosmic existence, like we have the, the God who is, who is like, basically this is saying everybody will die one day. Once you are born in the six realms, like there is no escaping death. So what we do in, in our uh, uh, life today, like doing something that is useful, being productive is the paramount uh, virtue. So our landscape has a lot of reminders about our own uh, impermanence, the transitory nature of our existence. So you see the flags, you see the short thing. They, they, they are new when you put it up, they fade over time, they get lost, they're broken down. So everything that is built eventually has to be destroyed. And if you don't do something meaningful in this existence, maybe like we become like a ruin. In the past, maybe it was something very spectacular, but now it's just a ruin. The landscape is still there, the beauty is still there, but they are gone. So likewise, I was very fortunate to be part of a project that somehow I was able to contribute to my country. And this is the Dochilaga project in, in Bhutan. It's located at 3,100 meters, and it was sponsored by Her Majesty the Queen. And I was the landscape architect and the designer for this project. This project has 108 stupas. Like in our culture, a lot of people just making one stupa is considered a great merit. I had the good fortune of converting this mount into the 108 uh, uh, stupas in Dochila. So as a result, like, I would like to talk a little bit about those project, the project that I did creating a cultural landscape in Bhutan. This particular project was very, very uh, important because since, like I said, like, as, as a Bhutanese, we are, uh, if we can do our project like uh, making a stupa for a good karm, uh, karmic uh, existence, it brings good, great virtue. And in this case, like having, just dealing with the design and the, and, and the construction of this entire project at that elevation with panoramas and mountain views, and having to work with so many people who contributed their free labor, because again, it's something greater than themselves. So people carrying the load, people coming by the truck load, you know, like people just, just doing stuff what they know, because they know it is something greater than, than who they are, that, that is what they're building. Um, and there's a lot of teamwork involved. Like, like everything else in life, like we don't create something by ourselves. There's a lot of people involved. Make this Pecha Kucha tonight. I'm sure like so many people involved, and even you, the audience, make a success. So likewise, to, to make that one monument, there were so many people involved. 
in our culture, we stress a lot on cooperation. And from this particular image, like we have an elephant at the base, a monkey, a rabbit, and a bird. And what happened was the elephant found a seed, the, the monkey dug a burrow, and, and the rabbit, he, put the, he watered the seed, and then there's the bird. And together, the collective effort, they made the tree happen. This particular landscape could be anywhere in Bhutan, like the cultural features that I explained to you, the flags are there, the temple are there. But again, this is another opportunity I had, making a Bhutanese temple in Washington, D.C. You can see the capital in the, in the background. So we had an opportunity during the Smithsonian Festival to convert the Washington, D.C. mall with all the monks and the temples and the Mandela to have two weeks of fun during the Smithsonian Festival to convert the entire uh, the, the mall area into a Bhutanese cultural landscape. And for this, I think, like, uh, when you say the cross-generation, like, we talk about cultures exchanging, here we had a great time bringing, like, all these people helped us make that a success. These are all builders from Bhutan who had never been out of Bhutan. Uh, they had to navigate the subway system, and they had to navigate the traffic and the airline just to get there, to make it possible. So there were so many people involved in making it a success. And in the last slide, I want to talk about, like, how just like a smoke, like eventually we're all going to disappear. Like we are here today, but tomorrow we might be gone. And likewise, if you see in the Washington, D.C., this is the image we presented to the American government at the end of the... Uh, so that was the background with the capital and then the four friends. So we hope, like, you know, we carry that message with you as well to become something greater than... Us.